All set to go. Kieran, come on. I'll just, just the important people. <laughs> We're important, but they're, they're, they're special. More important. They're special <laughs> for today. <laughs> Kia no tata. He tu a kena i rui te kau papa o te nei la. He tu atahi he tau toko ngā mihi. Ki a kai tau ki a tata kato ko tai mai nei i te nei la i roto i te nei tu puna fari o ngā ngā tu pukenga ki te nei mala. No rei la te nei te mihi aroha ki a kai tau kato ki a tata. No rei la ki a Koutou ngā memo o te komiti, o te Tangata Whenua Standing Committee, ngā memo o te rangapū mana whenua o Tauranga Mōna, ngā kaimahi o te Kaurihera o Tauranga City Council, me ngā haukainga o ngā tipuke. Nō reira, hara mai, hara mai, i roto i tēnei, tūpuna whare o tātou, i rungi tēnei, tēnei kaupapa. E bāna ki e ki te, ki ngā taku o te kaupapa o te rā. Nō reira, i rungi ngā, ngā mate o te, o te mōna, te motu, te kuia i tauranga mōna, ngā mate, haere, haere, haere atu rā. O te rā, i te tuwhere i tēnei hui, o te ata nei, i nui tātou. Let us pray. He pā e tō mātou mata nui tarangi, ki e tapu tō ingo. He pā e whakawhitana mātou ki a koe, mō tēnei. Wā mō tō aroha tō manākitanga, ki a mātou kū hui hui mai i tēnei ata i rungi i te kaupapa nei. Arahi tia mātou e koe i roto i nei mahi. Koe hui ka raiti tō mata kaiwhako o rā. Āke, āke, āke. Āmeni. Nō reira e koe.
Right, so <coughs> this, excuse me, just get my pen. Um, although this is a technically a formal meeting, um, the other one we had earlier this year was a one of the informal ones. So it's a um, it's a bit of a first for this committee to have this sort of meeting at a marae. And so I just wanted to set the um, scene in, in some of the ways that this is going to work today, and I'd like to open up with that first, so that everybody knows where we where we are, where we are. Okay. <coughs> so basically, the format of the hui will be in an informal sense to start with, moving into a formal part of the hui later on. The informal part of it at the start will be given, the time will be given to the hokainga to present their issues, their uh, kaupapa, to the Tangata Whenua Committee and will go through that process as they see fit, as they want to do it. <coughs> when that is finished, we will then in a sense, reopen into a formal atmosphere, a formal meeting as such, following the, um, the, the protocols that would normally happen if we were having the formal meeting in, say, for example, in council chambers. And that will be very much um, the mahi, the corridor, the interaction of the Tangata Whenua Committee only. But during the first part in the informal, the table will accept um, corridor coming from the floor as well as from the committee members themselves. Okay? Um, just for the, so that you know, this is being um, online screened. We have a few there, and I'm sure they can hear me, and their participation is one of listening only. However, if they have some pressing questions they want to put through the chair to the meeting, they will indicate that in the chat part of the online through to Robert over there and then she can bring the message over to me as the chair. <coughs> and I can bring it out. Uh, uh, on their behalf, I can put it to you so that um, we could manage that that way. But generally speaking, they're here to listen. OK? Um, so <coughs> just moving through the... Still moving through, uh, through the um, agenda, if you like, even though it's in an informal situation... Um, we'll start with apologies. We have apology from Stephen Selwood, right. who's uh, at the regional land transport meeting on my behalf. Okay. Kapai? Yes. Apology from staff. I have another meeting in the morning. I'll be leaving at 11.30. Thank you. A mover for accepting apologies, Shadrach. Second, 50, 50 order. All in favour say aye. aye. To the contrary, carried. <coughs> Public forum, we have nothing booked for that. Uh, call for any late items, we've had none that have come through. Any from the floor? Confidential business to be transferred, there is none. We, I've already explained to you the change to the order of business. Um, any declaration of conflicts of interest to be declared before we start? Carl, oh, okay. So 
that part of the agenda we have we have finished with, and I now propose to move us straight into the yes. Oh, sorry. Um, Matilda moves. Yep. Second. Thank you. Second. Yep. Second. By Anne. All in favour say aye. aye. Contrary. Carried. Therefore, I believe it's your time on behalf of the Hokainga Verna. So, kea koe te rākau, nō reira tēnā koe, tēnā tātou katoa. Ka huri. Kia ora koutou, nā mihi atu ki a koutou, i haru mai ki tātou no rai, te whetu o te rangi, nā mihi ki a koutou te tēku. Kia ora koutou katoa. This is a, it's a information only, this paper, and so you have copies for the commissioners and for Pūra. Te aroha mai. We're going to send it to Karen so she can send it out. Okay. And actually it was my sister that I had was supposed to be doing this. <laughs> but you know, older sister steps in and here I am. The whānau from our kāngā e tā peke, whakapapa tu tāhuna, moana and whenua of tauranga moana. It is a whakapapa we share with other hapu, iwi and whānau and which strengthens our resolve to exert our authority of our resources. The goals we have as a tikanga include ensuring our reo and tikanga are thriving on our marae and beyond. Our people, are, our people are healthy, well and adequately housed. Our people are employed through meaningful education, enterprise and employment. We have strong relationships with each other and with others. Te Taiao. Our kaino is loaded, located in a region where we have observed rapid development, which brings it hidden eco economic, social, cultural and environmental costs, as well as benefits. However, as a kaino, we are fortunate that our authority continues to be supported by our mātauranga, and our tikanga, and these things in turn ensure our future is defined by us. Te Kapua. Te Kapua is a piece of land that is bordered by Welcome Bay Road, the Rangatoa Estuary, the lands of Ngāti Hea, and a number of privately owned orchards and land blocks. It was returned to Ngāti Pūkinga as a part of our treaty settlement. It was owned by the Crown for many years as a land bank settlement asset. It was leased out for grazing over that time. When it was returned to us, it was a weed-ridden and neglected corner of the Ngāpeke block. However, the block was significant for us because it encompassed two past sites, Te Kapua and part of Papa Kānui. Now, that, you may have, if you come from Welcome Bay Road, you would have seen a huge development going on with all that land has been... Um, that's it, yeah, this is the <coughs> That's the land I'm talking about. We resumed ownership of the land in around 2017-18 and the land continued to be grazed while our commercial entity, Ngāti Pūkeng Investments, considered options for the block's future. In the end, the company decided it would develop a gold kiwi fruit orchard on the block while also protecting the pa sites and ensuring the wetlands would be restored. Originally, the company's intent was to develop a conventional orchard using chemical spray reg regimen. Many of the whānau of our kāngā based here at Fete Marae were vocal in their opposition to conventional, conventional chemically-based approaches. Our aspiration was for the orchard to be organic, if not now, in five years' time, which of course, would mean converting from a conventional orchard to an organic one. Happy to say that we got a license for a uh, organic gold uh, oh. last year. The development on the Fenway to Kapu is a critical milestone for the relationship between our Fano, our Matauranga, and our Tikanga. We have used our Matauranga to reclaim and learn to value again those of Tikanga which support our Mana Mutuhake. Our authority is Ngāti Pūkenga and our economic, social, cultural and environmental aspirations in the context of land and water development. Our tikanga speak to the way our whānau relate to Kapua. 
and its environs, and, our bit, and at the bottom line for our kaina with respect to the wetlands restoration, the orchard development, the treatment of wahi tapu, and any other development on the block. We had a, we've, we've re recovered the puna, that was as, mm -hmm. as a water supply. It's been there for years and years and years, and now it's all been cleaned up and it looks really lovely right now. Tikana, whakapapa ki te whenua, a ki te moana, ki te wai maori hoki. Respect the whakapapa of whānau, of the kainga to their lands, waters and each other. Mana whenua, mana moana, mana tangata, uphold the authority of the kainga and its whānau. Mana taia, support the whānau of the kainga to protect and care for our environment in a way that is meaningful for them. Panana tanga, strengthening relationships and support for each other. Manati tanga, coming together to solve problems. Kaitiaki tanga, intergenerational well-being. These tikanga drove our engagement with the company and they eventually made the decision to develop an organic gold kiwi fruit orchard and accordingly purchase an organic gold licence. As the thinking around Takapu was evolving, so too was the way in which the whānau of the kāinga wanted to assume and express their authority. We created a ohu, as a committee of some sorts, to be the voice of the whānau of the kāinga and their engagement with Ngāti Pūkenga Investments. The company secured funds through the PGF and from the Regional Council for the restoration of the wetlands and the protection of Takapua and offered our ohu the chance to lead those two areas of work. Our ohu is made up of members of our kainga, Rob McGowan, known as Pa, and, uh, you know, that, he's an expert, and Professor Chris Battersill, who is with the Waikato University, and um, we also have links with Shane Stewart from Priority One. That group has been monitoring weed control and planting in the wetland and past sites, as well as the water quality in the wetlands, and as as well as bouncing ideas around about related opportunities that might be emerging. Because of the chemical free and contaminant free approach we have taken and the organic gold curry fruit standards that we have been met, we began to consider developing organic applications to deal with pest plants and of course, with Chris as a member of Ohu, it made sense that we should make full use of the Matauranga lead Science supported thinking we are already doing. So, we ran some crucial trials of seaweed based applications on some of the weed species common on Takapua, and the preliminary results are promising. Whether it turns into something is another matter. We are also exploring carbon capture and carbon storage to find ways to take carbon from the air and return it to the soil. An opportunity we probably wouldn't have if it if we weren't developing an organic orchard and restoring the wetlands without chemicals. Unsurprisingly, the earthworks for the orchard uncovered signs of habitation by our ancestors and our archaeological work would enable us to tell the story about what our ancestors' daily lives were like and this is direct information we never had before. We are proud to have been insistent with what we wanted and we continue to problem solve alongside Ngāti Pūking Investments as we collaborate to produce the best possible results for the Fano of this kāinga. Our, our unique approach has forced Ngāti Pūking Investments and the kāinga here in Tauranga to persist, persist in ensuring the economic, social, cultural and environmental returns to support the Manamoto Hake of our Fano. The combination of orchard development, wetlands restoration and cultural heritage protection presented us with a unique opportunity to refresh our mātauranga, use our, use our tikanga and provide leadership in facing the challenge of doing this our way. We, we resolve, this resolve is challenging to say the least, but if we are successful and there's no reason why we shouldn't be, we will have created a model that could be replicated anywhere and of course, we will have made a minor contribution to leading the fight against climate change. Questions? Um,
Sorry, and Dan's is here, he's oh. the project manager. Oh, right, sorry. So at this stage then, we'll, we'll, I'll ask the questions. Yeah, from the floor. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, Normally, the it's the presenter that asks. Hi, Arnold. Chad. Kia ora. Ka tuku mihi kia koe a Ibuna, o Pōruru i te atanei. Just in terms of Tikapwe, how big is the block? Uh, how um, how many hectares would the orchard be? Okay. Yeah, and 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 how much is the the wetland set aside for? And then the and then the, the cultural elements are set aside. So the whole block is fifteen. Yeah, yeah. So oh, fifteen. Yeah, kiwi fruit is about nine. Nine hectares for kiwi fruit, five for wetland. Okay, 15 here, 15 lights, so I'm sure yeah. you'll be quiet for wetland. Wetland slash riparian. Yeah. Yep. There's a little bit of the open area for uh, utilities, parking, mm. storage, storage, yeah. storage. Yeah. turning around, loading and loading, uh, then the park sites. Yeah. <coughs> and, and nine canopy hectares of gold? So I'm, in, I'm interested in your carbon. What what are you doing for your sequestering sequestering of carbon? How are you approaching that? You are looking at uh, well, this we've been looking at ways for carbons. Sequestering, I think. Yes, sequestering. Sequestering. So, um, <coughs> yeah, look at the um, trying to. When we, when we actually done the work, we found that split spring and um, it became a particular focus. So, we kind of re shuffled our energy resources to the spring and that helped, or uh, with the help of it, with a digger and people on the shovel to look at where the springs were and where they were coming from to help that kind of demarcate a wetland mm -hmm. and um, that helps because you get flow going okay, and with that, with that it actually gave us uh, what we thought may have been dry land and even the engineers when they designed the coal it was dry, we actually develop more wetland. When you develop more wetland, that's a carbon right. sink. Yeah. So yeah. it was the mutual benefit of getting the pollens going as well as yeah, creating wetland. Yeah. And we had planted maybe about 4,000 plants in the end. Yeah. Looks like we planted like maybe three, four times as much as <coughs> it just rejuvenates. Mm -hmm. Then through. And he just got all the um, where it was bare because um, you just have to be careful with the digger not to, to break the original council rules too. Mm -hmm. um, we're creating a habitat with mm -hmm. big graves so we used uh, for working with the local quarry um, rock to create um, pools mm -hmm. habitat. And that's how you know we can that's how we're monitoring the seeing the life. Yeah. On the life on the and because you can tell it's healthy or not before you even yeah. put the uh, test kits in there. Yeah. We've done the DNA and what the quality is um, I was just saying, there were, we left it, um, there, there, there was a muka pona, he um, mm. was working five years on, on, on the roof and he kind of chucked it in the deep end. But he's very meticulous in his work. Finished off the pond. So we put the pond and rock and then got a nice pool. I've got some photos, but I'm sorry I haven't seen them over. But um, what we found is that when you expose it to the sun, because it was all this barbary, um, the algae and the silt that had come in over time all of a sudden get algae. Yeah. Yeah. So we thought, well, maybe if we put all that silt in the bin there, so we got some river sand. And we replace that with the river scene and it kind of fucks that up. 
and he and he he got the ball by hand. It was like two three day job, just sweeping things out, trying not to wreck stuff. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of hard work and just yeah. Um, yeah. perseverance and. Yeah, and there's another thing that um, this is this week. They've given us three scholarships. And oh, yeah. oh, wow. And there's a science, he's working with the science team. Yeah. You know, just uh, done their degrees, mm -hmm. uh, ready to do their masters. So, yeah, we've got three of those. You know, we're <coughs> grateful for everything we get mm -hmm. and to help us with all that. But also with Pa, hard author, though, he's quite clear of what needs to be planted to as well. You know, there's something that's native to the or a native tree, so yes, he's on board and he's, he's great. He's, He's a great asset. Mm. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm presuming, Des, you've, you've taken uh, time shots of it all and, and all mm. of that, eh? Because that'll look good when it's completed, eh? Yeah. watching a movie of it and that. Mm. Uh, I, I, I'll bring that up too because uh, I can see uh, an application where, you know, council and even other Māori Lōpū can uh, use your template for yeah. To uh, restore uh, um, uh, projects like that, you know. Yeah, well, Especially if you're taking a, a time lapse uh, photos of it, uh, yes. all of that and archiving what you've done, yes. it'll be like uh, your own yeah. intel too, eh? Yeah. Hey? <laughs> oh, yeah, the drones. I didn't put it all out there because it's yeah. really it's a lot of fun. Eh? Um, and see how all, you know, it's only part and parcel of the whole block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Phase because when we broke it in, there was a bigger shock there. Because when you were here, yeah, um, because it was like saying overrun, mm -hmm. um, then breaking it in to a point where you can actually start to do things, and a bit more you can, uh, yeah, focus. And, and even the health of uh, uh, the, the um, uh, yeah, the tuna and all that that's going to go, go through there will be uh, good to hold on yeah. to that knowledge and uh, be able to. Even use it at some of our waste water stuff yeah. where <laughs> you know, we've got the tuna back and the white bait back. Oh, white okay. Bait yeah. 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 okay, okay. Got a couple of dams at the end, so you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, that can only be yeah. good, man. Mm -hmm. That's the vision, the head's vision being this done tonight, really. Yeah. Well, yeah. really, uh, we've got uh, farmers from around here who work on their main yeah. like fencing, like the Newman's. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to just lock up Kaiti Michael and Chris Farno who were available to, um, to, to get dirty, really, and yeah. work yeah. in the rain. And yeah, no, well, we took me on there, bro, when I was like, hey, oh, hey, 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 Well, that's, yeah, it's pretty broken. Yeah, no. I mean, the beauty about it is it's just a road to you, know, and you go past it nearly every day, so you're watching, well, hey, we hang on a minute, what's happening? Dad, what's happening now? Yeah. So, you know, we're pretty much um, watching it. There's a whole lot of ecological areas around here that need um, restoring of that. Yeah, that would be a great example to use from there, man. That's a good vision. Yeah. <coughs> good, thank you. Thanks for yeah. um, Irene has a question then, buddy. Hi, Hippa Tachapte. Come on, we need more the and the restoration of the wetlands. Uh, just for the, for our sake here in regards to Tauranga City Council, uh, so that's Tauranga City Council, their restoration work is on, Aye. but here on this side where we're sitting, within this Wharitupuna, Western Bay. Bay. So for that in itself, for the councillors, uh, the commissioners, do we see the challenges that uh, you meet for Ngāti Pūkina? Yes. What are those challenges? Yes. And maybe you can help us a little bit more in stimulating that conversation in regards to one side of the road of the Whenua and Tauranga City Council and this side where our ahukainga, our marae, it's Western Day. Yeah, well, that caused confusion when we were doing the building of this, repairing mm -hmm. this, right? And we started the rebuild of this behind. Uh, knowing who to go to and who we can and can't go to. But it's like, you're right, we're on this side and Te Kapa's on the um, mm -hmm. City Council side. Mm -hmm. And I think our co-mortal spoke about that, about bringing it together mm -hmm. so that there's one council. Mm -hmm. 
and that would certainly help the whole ride up to Welcome Bay. You know, that's the confusion bill. That's where it is. And um, so, you know, it, it has, you know, the thing is you go to both and ask, and they go, no, you go there, you go, no, you go there. But um, that's not to say the relationship, the, the relationships have been good. They've been good on both sides. So, you know, a look, look on the got. So I can't yeah. want it. You must be mm. talking to one of the farmers because of the Meditaka Trust. No. They want to do everything. Yeah. But what's happened is TCC identified yeah, well, the area of storm on the So we oh. had a meeting about that. But so because they're on this side, on the Western Bay side, but there's a TCC infrastructure being mm -hmm. identified on there, which is mm -hmm. kind of a bit of encumbrance before we do the wetland work there. Yeah. And it's to do with the growth that's happening on top of you go up to the Tumba Drive end of um, Waikiki Road, right? yeah. that, that all runs into this yeah. creek which comes down through the Nampa. <coughs> 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 the, so yeah. the, uh, yeah, there are planning, kind of planning issues that do come across um, uh, the trustees and the advisors that meet in the county. <laughs> <that's> just, <laughs> we want to get on with some wetland work that uh, could potentially be there because it's a flood zone. Yeah. Not too sure, so you limit. What we don't want is to create a big thing and then the council comes back yeah. down and sees, sees it for their maintenance and takes it out for the flow. Because another, that, so yeah, so it's like a bit lucky because they don't have the timing of that. Yeah, and, and that's why I bring it up then yeah. for, for that potential reason, so we can see the challenges for booking it. I think it's great the initiative that you bring today. But, um, and, and it's great, but I think there are the challenges, but also the opportunities for Ngāti Pūkinga to bring mm. before this forum. Yes. Right. And those are the things that we need to look at, uh, not only the project, but the bigger picture of what this yeah. looks like for Pūkinga. Because mm. the other thing too with Te Kāpō and Te Kāpō is it's surrounded by other food fruit orchards, mm. which yes. are not organic. Yeah. Are not organic. So yeah. straight away, there's as, as we're talking to them about, you know, when they start spraying, etc., the impact it will have on ours. Mm -hmm. So there's still a portal going on, and they're aware of that. Um, so, you know, we have to be fully organic, otherwise it just won't work. Mm -hmm. So um, those conversations are going on with those surrounding kiwi fruit um, orchards, too, as well. Right? Yes, there's also the housing element, because <coughs> there's the oh, okay. Eastland Bay with the development transfer or TDRs. So if you protect the wetland, you get X amount of additional lots. And we know that farmer here wanting to um, develop their, their, their land for their papakaina aspirations. So it's trying to offset their opportunities to how they fund when it comes to development contributions. So um, that's taking into account, because I know the developers do it quite often as they will I've been involved with, with um, even with Ngaitiahi, with Irene trying to help identify cultural heritage areas so he, uh, the guy at the hospitals could section his, mm. his residence away from the commercial. But um, it's like you have to, it was the, I think the council weren't ready for it and um, because we're interpreting what that is and that there's a weight and measure on what cultural heritage is. We've seen it as an excellent place for the view shafts because we could see all of the Ngaitiahi were right in the centre of the Ngaitiahi Loi. But he wasn't able to get that um, um, particular additional lot. And the same thing is here is that you know we've done our best to create a wetland offset opportunity um, to have those uh, building opportunities for Papakainga as well as the park. So as much as we've been trying to um, do the mahi, we're trying to look at how that aligns with the planning provisions mm -hmm. so it benefits the, mm -hmm. the whānau here because yeah, the development contributions is, is something that we need to create a system of, to create that grant to uh, assist whānau in developing the land and that's why you get a lot of, like in Vulcan Bay, a lot of residential potentially, every, all the drains run into wetlands. And yeah, that's the issue down with Meritaka. Mm. 
So, you know, uh, it still requires um, more and more discussion yeah. as the issues identified. Yeah. A lot of it's still um, yeah, work in progress. Work in progress. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, um, buddy, and then Nathan. <coughs> I was just going to mention, Commissioners, that uh, as part of the wetland restoration project in the Kōku Mirirua Valley, um, part of that project is also to reintroduce adult inanga to restore the white bait population. Um, and so it's in conjunction with um, council staff, regional council, and um, Waikato University. Uh, so we're also looking at incorporating that into a wetland restoration project over by the airport. Um, something which um, is a remedial program where we had a, a wastewater sewer overflow during the construction of the B2B section of the, um, of the roadway there. Um, the sludge are then going through the golf course, shop park, and um, into the estuary. So as part of that restoration work, um, we're also looking at putting um, eel paths, Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, creating habitat for um, adult um, inanga, um, and quite happy to also supply fish to um, this project here. Um, it comes from a um, a white bait farm in uh, Walkworth, North of Auckland. Um, I think the guy produces something like uh, 200 tonnes of white bait a year. <coughs> So, um, pretty impressive operation. Um, I think regional council have also um, sought his help in, his, in uh, work on the Pakatani River too. So, um, the whole white bat restoration thing has got quite a bit of momentum going at the moment. Sure. Thanks, Nathan. Sure. For that addition, mm -hmm. uh, Nathan. Oh, yes, kia ora. Um, you just, uh, I think, uh, Des answered my question just at the end of his. Uh, his talk there. I'm just um, wondering, would you, do you guys um, run into um, remnants of old flow paths that you can you can identify, but then there's yeah, there's there's infrastructure like a, a road barrier um, that that the wetland would have flowed right to the estuary. Um, how 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 do you um, uh, propose to like um, work with um, say there's housing on those bypass as, as now how, how would how would you guys um, work towards say the restoration so it could make it to the yeah. to the estuary what kind of um, um, solutions do you have for those I've got a recent example my cousin went to go and watch his partner and Fano play softball so naturally him he goes into the creek and there's a dead giant eel so it's either it's been fished or it's polluted. Mm. And uh, Mrs. Carlton Reserve, mm. where sheds is, you know, it goes in behind <laughs> where the fuddy is down there. And um, it's a lot of our, a lot of our networks have become stormwater. Yeah. And that's why I keep um, asking and challenge the council stormwater stuff. Are you saying it's a wetland? Are you saying it's a stream? Or is it a drain? Because different rules apply once the existing environment has been explained. And if it's a stream, well then you just consent everything along that. That makes it not a stream, because it makes it by its depth or stormwater. Because if you have those conditions in and around that, then you can allow to um, identify, because it's on, it's on the record, and they all consented, and you can see, assess whether those things are um, can create pollution problems, like we had in Bow Morris Drive. Uh, we got called out there because the guys were doing a concrete wash down with the pebble look and it all sat in the, in the manhole. And then we had big flash rain and it all just rose up and it went into. And we had that thing in the paper about those heaps of eels dying. So it's, it's actually knowing the infrastructure and what the potential. Because like everything all ends up in the water and then ends up in the harbour. So what we do at the Puna is reflected to what happens in, in the harbour on a bigger scale. So I, I think uh, knowing the, like with the Meritaka, uh, well, I, I was just, oh, I didn't know what's that, because it was on the MAPI, the council system. 
and it became a concern for various reasons like what you bring up those you know um, but if it is flood then it may be subject to their maintenance program or they'll dig it out um, there might be a cumulative effects of the upstream catchment with the housing that's projected there mm -hmm. so yeah i think yeah, there's some desktop you really need to know what the council utilities are in and around there and then pretty much with a either with a, with, a, with a bait and a hook, go out and have a look, or a, or, or a spade and have a look around here. Yeah. So. And, and just also I'm commenting on the Western wetland restoration on Omanu. In our initial discussions with the contractor CGC, we, we, we wanted an yeah, a, a alternative to chemical spraying on the wetland restoration. <coughs> um, yeah, contractors just said it's cost too much. Um, it's we've got to use um, glyphosate because that's more effective and it's cheaper. Um, so yeah, we, we like that stance that you guys are taking. We'd like to uh, emulate that ourselves as well. Thank you, thank you, Nathan. Um, sorry, uh, Maru, and then Matthew. Yeah, I want to ask the big question: Are they are they going to advance with this plan? the advances plan. I'll ask that question because it's highly important to the regional, uh, national and global economy. It has all those features in it. What I'm talking about is the economic capital and the social capital. And the balancing of the economic capital is that you look after the social capital, which are these environmental, cultural uh, particular issues. And the big picture is that the eastern arterial are the roads that need to run. In other words, that's where the regional economy is. It, it's the, if you're talking about the three waters, you've got all the lakes where the eastern arterial leads to. And of course, those are going to be big global issues about the three waters. Those, those need to protect them. And then you've got, we now own all the central North Island parts. Just so happens that all the lines are the comes from those Māori ownerships that's, that owns the Central North Island Forest. Those land will be referred to anything, something else. This epidemic is going to create a evolutionary change. So we need the innovators to start writing on paper now to actually anticipate the evolutionary change. Because when the gates open at the Port of Tarama, then our goods will be in demand from China and all over the world. We need high productive goods, clean productive goods, and, and that eastern arterial is the link to the regional economy, national economy, and all that. And the pathway to all that are all these plants here that's going to what I call the social economy. And of course, those things need to be planned now, advanced now. So I'm just encouraging to advance that that uh, plan that was put here into stages and make a political statement about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, comment. Okay. So you answered your own question. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mati. Hi, Kara. Makoto um, Banana. Um, I just wanted to, uh, like, I, I drive on this road just about nearly every week, mm -hmm. so I can see I see the landscape changing all the time at that corner. Um, uh, whenua and, and it's really amazing to see uh, just what's been changed but what really struck me was the puna and um, actually visualising it because it was always it was covered in gorse and, and you know and everything else so you couldn't really see it until now and it's look, looking absolutely awesome I think my question is about <coughs> the source uh, where is that puna you know where is the source is it, is it coming in from the western bay um, uh, District Sorry. Council oh, yeah. through into Tauranga City Council. <laughs> so I guess there needs to be some kind of um, conversation with both, uh, you know, uh, well through really, uh, the regional Western Bay and the Tauranga City Council. So uh, yeah, that, that's probably my question is where is the source of the, the, the water coming from? Well, the, yeah, well the issue was not, is not so much that with the council it was the source of the stormwater from the road. 
because yeah. there's a culvert pipe, so we need to build it up so like a bit of a bun that runs out, so it doesn't go into the part uh, into the pudding. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's, it, it. It does. It is on the other side because the far now on the other side access yeah. that pudding too. But all the way down, they just access. Yeah. It's like a pepia where there's ammonia, there's a spring into the oh, hour yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Papa canoe probably be, yes. be a source. Yeah. Or Tani Wainuku being the council's source because it supplies all the municipal water supply for the city. Mm -hmm. Well, there is one thing too, I mean, is when they started clearing the road, you know, started clearing the way up the road, on the road, and that's another yeah. one. And then there's a lot of the um, overflows that are coming down and run off into the yep. into our bedlar. So yes, yeah, so that's a smooth yeah, working progress for sure just for us to do that. Um yeah, kia ora, thank you. Um Ron down and then Um yeah, kia ora, Ron Dalena. Um I am the alternative for Mojiahi, but I actually live just down the road on the corner of Waka. <laughs> um and so my money is around encouraging and enabling some of our whanau, especially in Tauranga Wanawai with regards to wanting to build on Māori Eid. Um, the question was posed to Werner and Des with regards to what is that like, you know, any of the progression, development contributions and things like that. Um, the, the challenges that whānau, especially around here, I'm also a trustee on the block on the corner, that's the cross the road 584, that's TCC. We live on Mokuki 60, that's Western Bay. It's kind of like starting to ramp up with regards to whānau coming home, they want to be home and they're starting their planning now. So having to weave your way through two different kind of anomalies <laughs> of, of policies, <laughs> the different fees, I was at Western Bay yesterday just clarifying a couple of things around what the <coughs> contributions are for Western Bay, but also just building on our public at the corner, whatever our aspiration is, it actually ends up affecting the ones across the road because as soon as we started with earthworks, the ones across the road were complaining because of the runoff of the water. I'm also a trustee in the forestry block up the back, and there are several puna that are coming in through there as well. So it's it's going to be in, it needs to be complementary, whatever policies are between the two councils. Um, the other part around the infrastructure is that just trying to get fibre, you know, out here is really difficult. So it's already at capacity now. So this is Mount Epuki. We have 10 hectares that might be able to put 200 houses. But that capacity hasn't been loaded up on any of the towers out this way either. So the infrastructure on the yeah, stormwater, yeah, um, um, the marae, I mean, it's kind of intermittent when you have Wi-Fi out here, regardless. The, the weather last week was just fabulous, just cut you off. Um, so there's lots of different elements out here through Ngāti Pūkenga that we just naturally have to kind of like just handle. But it actually has a huge effect. The transport, the public transport stops at Anganui Road. It doesn't come along here. You can't catch a bus. A rear coat taroa can't go out there and catch that bus. They've got to try and get onto a school bus. So there's lots of different elements that are out here that are quite effective um, for TCC members. Um, but the access and transport in order to enable some of the fun out here is limited. Um, so we've got Kohanga um, out here and the whānau numbers have increased. Except between the two councils, they haven't allowed that in that growth plan. Um, yet there is a long term plan for both sides, but I mean, the infrastructure means more than the stormwater and really it's the capacity to be able to get our farmer in and out. There's no other schools here other than the Yeah. So, but, so, yeah, so it's been great. It's nice to hear that GCC have reviewed the, the development contribution. I'm just reluctant to touch that because there's so much happening on GCC, I'd rather work on the block that's at Western Bay because it was just easier to manage. So I'm kind of picking and choosing how far things can be directed based on what's happening within the council around the policy. It's good all the stuff's coming out between the two authorities that, that oh, yes, govern yes, this land. Yes, so. <laughs> <laughs> how queer yeah. shit? Actually, I'll, I'll pass on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. E pā I'm very Order. happy with the Western Bay rating structure out here. Mr. Chair, I think uh, that was something we discussed as members of Smart Work. Mm. Yes. We were mm. trying to achieve 
over many years. Yeah, that's but unfortunately, right. it didn't come to that consensus of both councils come to an agreement so we could have um, some of those commonalities that would help the whanau that were meeting the issues of working with two councils. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and it just brings to light just sitting here with Pukina, uh in regards to some of the, the challenges that you're still facing. Okay. You know, I just I just had a word here to build and probably, you know, with Town and Chat, uh Town and Council just need to bring them back under the under the wing. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah, let's just make it happen. Yeah. Thanks. Well, I'm glad that they're sitting here listening to all this calling and all that's going on. I was going to say earlier, really, it's a it's a spark growth issue, but um, yeah, we won't go there <laughs> today. Anyway, um, yes. Yeah, no. Actually, the notice of any new representative, but I have a question in response to your money uh, example in um, Nathan's quarter, and that the contractor is, I was seeing is the, is, is the Farno being involved with as opportunity to, to contract with the Farno? Um, it, it was, yeah, it was put in place. Um, we, we wanted to have a, a relationship with the contractor to learn about re restoration yeah. in that area and um, it's, yeah, it's, it, seems, it seems to be a very, um, <coughs> how do you say, uh, non, non -ma um approach but I hope we could be um, more involved in that, yes. in the restoration with the, our contract. What I found with our workers it wasn't a contract, it was like an honour to work on the land. Mm. But that will be a pay that we kind of worked over our hours in the end, but uh, I think it's get that, that, that structure in the way we you get your farmer doing it, they've got more than they can buy more into the cushion. It's not yeah. so much about the... Yeah, we're, we're a part of the planting as this, at this stage, yeah. but yeah, but, but, um, actually trying to progress that more. So okay. Can, uh, kia ora, God. Um, I'd like to uh, move this along, but we've got a, still a lot to go through our agenda. Oh. If there are no more... Can I just... Yeah, sorry. I just, yes, I just think um, if, if you... I think if you come across a good solution that is organic, we, we would certainly like to hear it, because mm. we, we have been having conversations with our contractors about um, particularly where they're in... I'm just thinking of places like Wairaki, mm. Where we have, you know, we have uh, people who are wanting us to move away from chemical solutions. So, you know, if you've got something that's effective, we're really keen to hear um, what that is and and see whether we we also can be um, leading, uh, um, showing some leadership by moving away from chemicals as much awesome. as we possibly can. We're certainly working on that now. So yeah. Great. Awesome. There you are, the door's just been opened a bit further. Um, so, uh, yes, Carlo? Sorry, please, it's just off of my mind, just to support the corridor that's been happening here. I think there's a number of um, environmentally enhanced solutions that we, TCC's had a go at a few, but probably sometimes less innovation, more limitations, what's needed. So, mm -hmm. definitely want to highlight the use for the commissioners that. Um, Durham Street, the rain gardens there were a good, uh, were a good example mm. of doing something that took a bit longer, was more expensive, but in the long run it will be much better. Mm. And, I, and I can't remember, I'm sort of looking over at these in case he, he knows the deals of probably um, Richard Conning was on, and it's one of the interchanges I think along the eastern link, and there's been an enhanced um, way that that runoff was managed and the coal goes into a little wet mm. system there. Yeah. It's purposely designed to get a good result. I can't exactly remember all it is, but it is a great example of a little bit of overinvestment and co design with some of the good result. So I think if I say that out loud, we'll try and dig it up somewhere yeah. and get it in front of us because if that became our standard practice, we would get a, a long way ahead and just set that in place that rather than the likes of these having to argue for something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's stuff that they want to be reverse engineered, but all the future ones yeah. are designed in that manner that will be great. And um, 
Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you for that. So now we're working with the seaweed. Seaweed seems to be the main product. Mm. So we're looking at developing that as a spray. Good. Well, we certainly look forward to that um, the progress of your plan. Okay. So I'd like them to call for a mover to receive the Ngāti Pūkenga report. Yep. Moved by... Oh, sorry. Rehua. Rehua. Do you have a... Sorry, no. Sorry. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I'm not on the agenda or anything, I'm just going to share, but uh, I just want to stand and I suppose you had to my call of intervention in terms of what the uh, target for me. Yeah. About the, um, well, I suppose you yeah, had the synergies between the TCC and Western Bay in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, the Marae and the Western Bay, uh, and uh, obviously that's under the world of TCC. And um, in relation to a matter of, uh, to the pipeline that runs down the main road here. Back in 2008, or 2006, we had a fire that raised that 30,000 regional funding we had to rebuild. And it was rebuilt in 2008. And part of that rebuild was um, we had to obviously provide um, water sprinklers inside the economy. Um, because there was a push at the time, I think there was a number of foreign media that moved mm -hmm. down that same year. Uh, you know, we found a number of various you know, circumstances. So, but a lot of them didn't have any uh, water sprinklers, and we certainly didn't. But anyway, as part of the, um, the rebuild, we had to install water sprinklers, and we had to provide two um, 20,000 litre tanks um, of water to provide that service. And, um, and we, we tried to approach, I think, the Western Bay District Council and City Council in terms of trying to possibly look into the water main that, you know, that runs down the road. And obviously the, the synergies there at the time wouldn't allow that. Um, uh, the structure wasn't easy to allow that. Um, so I'm just, I suppose the question is, is the opportunity or potential for that to happen not to just for the more art, but for, for others as well mm -hmm. to um, to um, tap into that to that resource. Um, obviously, you know, you know, you're talking about you know water and, and everything else, and and uh, where the, the punas are coming from, and a lot of the punas are actually coming from you know outside mm -hmm. of all the people, which you know kind of all the market get rock in terms of this year, but. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so I, I suppose the question is, is there potential, you know, for that to, for us to be able to look into that, that pipeline at some stage? Uh, not just on my but on my own as well. Uh, you know, for the community, just uh, the community, say from, well, actually, the only way right to pass the energy to, to, to um, make my way there. Well, especially on the, on the side of the road. So that's my question, I think. Is there any response from I just wanted to make an extra link just to take to Paul Behua. Um, when uh, Ranapu has been presenting on the three orders to the commissioners, one of the themes was that provision or access for infrastructure on my land in, in the big example. I think we've used Kaitumapo as an example yeah. with visas, but, but also here is another one where we transport infrastructure and services through a class model yeah. land. So uh, we've made sure these are not just been working on the to reference into that uh, project steering group to make sure that the kind of funeral objectives bring through those themes that have been discussed with the commissioners. So just to provide some new features there. Yeah. yeah, so that too uh, goes to the way River of Unsing that your tunnel in terms of what has yeah. happened yeah. thus far. Okay. Good. That's part of uh, my core or my push when I'm uh, uh, in different forums talking about KPIs and connections, the uh, actual connections to Māori land, you know, infrastructure yeah. connections, <coughs> uh, you know, that's got to be a KPI for all of this to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's uh, just 
sort of words, nice words and that, you know, we won't might actually get traction on, but we've got a KPI saying, uh, you know, let's say along here we're, we're wanting a uh, 100 connections, you know, and uh, along the, the planning way, halfway through, we might be uh, have 10 connections only, or 50, whatever, but as long as there's KPIs to all of that. Okay. Well, I guess it's good that it's been highlighted through this committee, yeah. and then needs to come go back into council through other. Yeah, and that, 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 that's, uh, yeah, that, that, that's okay. when we were at the CTWF and the smart right. stuff, eh, with the uh, KPIs for, for all of those connections yeah. and different planning. Uh, and the runner who can bring it through our own forum and our relationship with council outside of this committee. Yep. Okay? So, kia ora, Des. You can have the last say. Uh, so I first met Marty actually, um, we were monitoring the earthworks at Lunginu for the Papakaina and um, the solution in terms of engineering the possible right of mains connections <coughs> where what we found in those discussions because it's even about servicing the costs with Māori had a big jump in rates um, because it went from uh, land value to capital value and the UAGC for each individual dwelling. You know, there's unprecedented and rate rise, but I've known the local government and they made that shift. So there was a, a question to are they paying the rates separately? Yes. So the issue was, well, what I gathered out of that was a planning issue around um, zoning and incorporating these Māori. Uh, communities which have been here. If you look at Kaitimaku back when the early, that was a whole village and it's just been left to the side while everything else has grown and this is what's kind of happening. Yeah, right of aims would have been good um, and I knew the, the fire event was a very big event and a lot of frustration around the provision to this community facility. Um, yeah, I can remember that, that day and that, that period. So I think a lot of it's here, a lot of it lies in the planning. Okay, thank you, Des. Right, so we'll get back to where, where we were before, and that is uh, someone to yes, move that we receive the Ngāti Pukenga report. Mover, pretty seconded by Shad. All in favour say aye. aye. To the contrary, carried. So thank you, Ngāti Pukinga, for your presentation. And I can you ask a question? I'm yeah, sorry, sure. but just, just so, you know, so that this, just to make sure that I've got the, the process right. We've received the presentation, but we've also had a number of questions, mm -hmm. issues raised. My understanding is that those issues will be captured as well as the presentation and then form part of the ongoing reporting. Yeah. Is that, is that yeah. correct? Yes. So, so just to make sure to make, make it clear to Ngāti Pukanga that it just doesn't disappear into the ether. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. it just, just you know, stays here as corridor. that actually all of that will, is captured and mm. we, we will, where we can, try and answer some of those questions or at least address them. Yeah. Right. I agree. My, my understanding is that it this committee's responsibility is to carry that forward yeah. from the informal state that we're in into a more formal position. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Who, yes? I just like to add that um, we've probably raised this issue a number of times over the years. Right? Do know if they brought that other issue with the city council uh, and this debate. And I think the same response we received at E3, but there hasn't been a lot of follow through. I don't know, anyway. I thought you were there. I've got some things, so. Just like to mention it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is the first time that this committee's heard it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other committee's not okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. just yeah. give us a bit of time then. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much again to Ngati Kukanga. And now we will yes, move from the informal into the formal part. I'll move to the formal part. Moved by Matere, seconded by Fiddy. All in favour say aye. aye. To the contrary. Sorry, Mr. Chair, through you, what time are we expected to finish that? Um, um, 
Yeah. What time? Well, it's nearly quarter to twelve. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Normally we would finish at twelve, but we do have a bit of license to go to twelve thirty if needed. How how is the kitchen for the lunch set? Anyway. So yeah, so I just but, uh, we we do need to be more mindful. I mean, we, we can get so carried away, but we could go yeah. all afternoon and have a have uh, lunches afternoon tea. But no, sorry, okay. Sorry, Mr. Key, I just got a text. My mother's got an yeah. appointment at. Um, one o'clock. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. I'm sure you'll be right in time to have a do. quick, quick yeah. snack and then go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's move along. This is all form stuff. So it's just present presentations and um, not too much other input coming from outside of the committee. Well, there shouldn't be any. Okay. So we'll be straight into the presentation from the. Uh, on behalf of the um, Tucker Confederate Total City Council Committee, and I believe it's Cole. So, Pia Cole. Pia. Hold on, mind. Come up to the table and receive uh, your report. Thank you. Tēnā katoa katoa, ko Cole he tapu ngoa, hai kamahi a hau i te kanahira o Tōtū. Anorea, tēnā katoa, tēnā katoa. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be pretty quick. Um, <laughs> this report is really just to ask you um, for some feedback um, about how you want your meetings to go. You know we've got these that we've had formal and informal meetings, um, three each. Um, previously the formal meetings were held um, at the council um, and then the informal ones were on the Rai. Um, and um, now that all our meetings are going to be held on the Rai, we just really wanted to get some feedback from you today about how you would like that to proceed. Um, so I've given you a couple of options around that. Um, and really, yeah, it, you know, it doesn't have to be decided today, just some feedback, even if you want to provide that to me um, at some other time. But yeah, if you just want to have a quick kind of, I am, put it on. I think it looks like he's about to. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, Oh, uh, I believe the um, Anne wanted to speak to that because okay. it's quite pertinent cool. right now. Yep. I, I just, I uh, just, you can be up there. I just wanted to make it clear that the commissioners felt that the really important part of the role of the, of the committee is hearing from the different marae and having that opportunity for uh, the people on the marae to come and talk in a surroundings where they were comfortable. Um, because it is quite imposing for people to come into a formal council meeting. So we, we were really looking for that opportunity um, in a more um, relaxed uh, atmosphere for the various marae. So, but but we're, we're happy to have um, comments from the Tanda Whenua members of the, of the committee um, uh, you know, before you make that final decision. But, but that was just where we felt that we could actually be a lot more, um, we could get a lot more input from from the various hapu um, mm -hmm. around the area if they were comfortable in their own surroundings. So that was the reason for, for suggesting a change. Right. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, thank you for that, Ian. I actually commend you guys for, for doing that. That's, um, you know, because I was talking to some of the whole guy out here saying that you guys will be going around now uh, every couple of three months to East Marae and wanting to know each uh, each Marae's uh, actual issues. So that, that's great. Uh, and plus, uh, um, I'll confirm now, I, I talked to a couple of our Marae trustees and we're ready to go to, for this next meeting in April for up at uh, Tom Paul so. Yeah. So uh, anyway, it's like um, competition for which one? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I was very so Our pal's been out for three days, and so we've been up on my eye, so I've had a chance to talk to everybody. Hey, I've got a waste with a Zoom movie tomorrow, and I know a few of them because uh, our pal's still out. I'll be up on my eye, and I know they'll all be interested in having a look at that. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm looking at uh, your, your options. Um, 
myself, I, I like the, the first one on page 12, the number two one, like remo removing the distinction of formal and informal meetings and that and having them all at the, the marae and being able to uh, have uh, like uh, you know, open corridor and if we have to uh, close them there. Uh, also, um, um, uh, the appointee, uh, appointing a deputy chairperson, uh, um, uh, I'm in favour of number three, deferring it until we actually uh, get our, 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 our chair confirmed. Yeah. Yeah. And also the uh, live streaming, um, the, the number two option for me was uh, sort of all good for, for my point of view. Uh, that, that's about all I had, had to it. Okay. Any other thoughts on the options put forward, buddy? I'd just like to throw it for the idea that um, this committee has meetings on mark. I think it's a good way of bringing out different segments of the community together. Yeah. Um, and we have a very little scheduled of it today, but it gives the opportunity for a whole kind of people to see how government talks, uh, the government's talks, the government's mm -hmm. Um So I fully support that move. Just for your interest, I believe, this is my opinion, that regarding um, clause 12, for the form of informal, we're actually, we're actually in number two yeah. at the moment. Yeah. In number two, we've done it, we've split it up. Yeah. We've done the informal and the informal. And so this gives us a good example of yeah. what number How two looks like. Yeah. Okay, and we haven't done one or three yet. Yeah. They're still um, hypothetical and um, so, so uh, I guess the question is, is that do we, can we, or should we make the decision in terms of those, haven't we got one, two, those three options today? Have we got time to absorb what, exactly what it is, to discuss it fully, and then come up with the answers, or should we take this away and think about it, bring it perhaps back to the, our Rangapu meeting? That's the question I put to this committee. Which way would you prefer? Do you want to the resolution to vote on various options? Yeah, possibly. Um, Carla? Sorry, I've got a couple of renovators here. Um, one's time. Yeah. And the others, this has probably been something that's been long awaited, I think. Yes. I think it's, um, uh, it speaks to the genuine or uh, well, the genuineness of the intention that it's come from commissioners to do yeah. it. Yeah. So I yeah. would encourage you to get on with it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> good. Good. great meeting. Well, I think you have actually been a very two style. Yeah. And Nazi Hanada was a great meeting. Yeah, exactly. And then today. If we think back to Wairoa as an example, there was another co-papa on the day, but everybody spoke openly about it. And then yeah, there was, was partnership and action. So I well, just... Encouraging that uh, you'll hear now. Yeah. So, well, no, thank you. So, shall we move oh, yeah, thank thank you down now. resolution for the uh, resolution that we um, confirm option two? Well, they, okay. They, yep. We'll move through each clause 12, 13, 14, Sorry. and vote accordingly. So, we're now looking at, at clause 12. Yep. Option four meetings include. Yeah. What is the preference? Number two. Number two. Okay, so who? You're moving to, buddy seconds it. In favour, say aye. Aye. Carried. Number two. Tick. Number 13. <laughs> Appointing a deputy chairperson. We've heard defer a decision until we get the chair, independent chair, which is just about ready to go, I believe. Yes, um, I've heard from Kieran. So, is there an appetite for number three? Yes, I'll move that. Move. Happy to second, Chair. Um, Bill seconds. All in favour say aye. aye. Contrary. Aye. Carried. Done. And live streaming, um, blah, blah, blah. Number one, you can read it. Number two, number suggestions two. from the I'll move committee. Two. Is there a seconder for number two? Any court at all? All them. Can I just suggest that if a particular Maui or Hapu felt like they didn't want their particular presentation yeah. live stream, they could simply yeah. indicate that to the chair at the start of the meeting, yeah. and that should be an option. Okay, so we've got number two with an addition subject to... 
Oh, hang on. Subject Just to permission. Just write where they want to do Subject to permission. Oh, okay. Subject. So we've got that included anyway, yeah. Carlo. So who moved that again? I've forgotten now. 30 seconded by Buddy. All in favour say aye. aye. Number two is done. That's that part of it done. Um, there are no other decisions to make out of your report, Paul. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, just a question really. I think that probably the, um, the um, initiative or the implementation will come from the uh, Takawana Mahu yes. unit to, to oh, absolutely. Uh, implement the coming, yeah. forthcoming Marae yes, outstanding yeah. Yeah, program. They can uh, just manage keep, that process. Yes, just keeping in mind that, that not all Marae are open, you know, so there may be yeah. just specific ones that are going to be targeted. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and also just to um, also um, give other kapu with the opportunity or mara the opportunity if they can tag on yeah. uh, to um, yeah yeah so yeah and, and I would say mindful also that while the Tucker wine wine is managing this process um, that there is feedback coming from the Rangapu anyway okay. Yeah, and I think uh, Tucker Wine is taking a bit of a liberal view in the CS Marae. They might be at another uh, uh, venue that's, that the Marae or the Hapu may, may choose yeah. given circumstances. Yep. And then also, that, yeah, said that the Marae and Hapu might choose to, to join their presentations. I think the intention is to take the Hui out of the community to the most comfortable environment possible because yeah. yeah. I think everybody's been valuing the nature of the conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I think we just need to make a resolution for receiving Carl's report. We haven't done that yet. So I move out to receive the report. Oh. Um, and much of your seconds, all in favour say aye. aye. To the contrary, carry. Let's move on. Um, we're now on to the Tanaka Funeral Presentation Updates Report from the Takawangi Kaakwe Tarako Kala. Heidi. あ、今日はたとえ、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと
we have some of those reserves. I was going to take some photos. I was at Photo Door yesterday, but the fence is about two thirds painted, and I went, oh, I've got to wait till it's painted. So I will put through some photos at some stage. Um, the contracting role has been established, and we had a meeting out at Photo Door. You would have heard uh, the positive impact that Money Mata is having in their community and, and my work in with us. Um, and he's in almost, uh, he's probably in contact with us twice a week um, in various forms. And we do have an emergency exit uh, through the um, airport land, although, um, again, I just got a text from Ray Dunkel to keep that corridor happening because it is the, the access way that's available to us is actually right next to Lauters, um, which we know is a highly uh, contentious area for the Mai and one that they're really concerned about the level of safety there. So we've seen that as um, something we've done as quickly as we can. However, there's some more sophisticated exit pathways that we can discuss. So uh, we, we anticipate being able to talk more through that and update you further on that. Uh, other than that, uh, really, I think you should be able to um, uh, to be updated by when you report and open questions. I just. But the, the one I wanted to add was the last one, um, where um, Marty and I are meeting with Charlie and is it Kyle yep. Stanley on Monday to Good. discuss. Good point. Yeah. So, yeah. So, 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 uh, Paul on behalf of Mark, later in the years reached out to council to express their subject to the wishes of the Hapu. Um, they'd like to have this discussion. Good. Thank you. If I don't know, I'm looking at the report. I don't mind reading the report. Okay. So, moved by Shep to receive the Takawanga report, seconded Second. by yes. Bill. Yes. All in favour say aye. Aye. To the contrary, Kerry. Kia ora. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Carlo. Um, the. Uh, Final one, I believe, is the Tangata Fen representation updates. Report from the Rangapu. Thank you. Um, as you see in our agenda papers, is uh, the report on behalf of Te Rangapu uh, Just please note that the date is, says Wednesday, 16th of February 2021. It could be 2022, <laughs> while we're behind. Um, and uh, I just want to have my report taken as read. Um, only because of the time frame that we have at the moment and I think it's indicated that um, uh, lunch will be on soon. So uh, uh, it's just the TCC Tangata Whenua Workshop updates and those are the list of some of the over the last six months of what we've been doing and I mean it's been very really busy times um, and uh, we've been you know really uh, been awesome that we've been able to contribute and participate in a lot of these workshops and the feedback from the Te Rangapu members have been really welcoming. Uh, the key priorities for this year, can I just skip the Māori World one and come back? Yep. Uh, so the next uh, bullet point is around the strategic planning um, three year Te Ao Piki Tango O Te Kaharo Rangatira which um, the, uh, Carlo and, and Co have been taking us through, absolutely wonderful stuff and, and um, yeah, also um, been really supported by um, by the Takawanga Māori unit. Uh, also, um, things that we see as a key um, priority is the RMA reform. I understand that we're going to be... Uh, are you taking us through this? <laughs> Thank we're you. Giving a presentation. Yes, a <laughs> presentation. Okay, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, the three waters reform, I think there are plans um, to, um, in the next couple of months, to have another presentation. Um, with the, in front of the Te Rangapu yep. uh, and the Te Ao Māori framework has been really, really, um, you know, advantageous, especially when we're having those combined ones with the Ko Tour. Yep. Um, it's been really, um, you know, awesome to hear that, that we can actually come together on a, on a really important um, take uh, or framework on Te Ao Māori and I really take my hat off to Takawana Māori unit, you know, that they just really push this in front of us to, you know, to make sure that we are over um, and, and, you know, <coughs> over what's happening in terms of this um, particular project. Yep. Uh, the review into the future of the local government, um, I think Antoine may be coming back to do a bit of an update on where we are um, with that particular um, 
matter moving forward. Okay. So there's definitely quite a few things happening. I just wanted to bring up about the Māori Water Strategic Plan. There's a, a subcommittee of Te Rangapū that have come together to look at, because it, it, it is meant to be this year, mm -hmm. um, that we were going to um, plan for elected members. But because we don't know what's happening at the Commission, <laughs> yes. uh, uh, not that we, we don't mind, um, we're really happy that it's, um, you know, whether you're staying or not, but it would be really good to have some clear ideas. Mm. We do understand that you have already done an exit um, plan, uh, so, and, and I don't know when the NIA is going to be coming back to give us a yeah. bit of a, you know, a report, but, um, you know, if, it, if we're not going to entertain a Māori ward until 2025, um, that also brings us another step closer to the uh, representation review again. So we have to go through that whole process again. So, um, which means that we've missed out the whole term of not having a mile of war. And I know that, um, you know, generally most of um, the people in the total community are wanting to keep the uh, commissioners in place after October this year. But, um, yeah, I just thought I wanted to, to raise that because, um, yeah. you know, we need, ah, do need ah, to start okay. planning for the Māori Ward. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, thank you. That is my report. Yeah, I, think, I think there Good. is a question in that. Would you like me to? Yes, please. <laughs> 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 I might have an answer, but I, I, yeah. I do okay. know that um, the Minister is considering the exit plan that we proposed, but, of course, she has... Um, legislation that she has to comply with um, and, and she's got a lot on her plate. We're not expecting a, a decision from her until possibly mid to late March. Oh, okay. I think is the indicated timeline. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, what I did want to comment on was the work that's been happening with Baranapu appointed members on the Strategy, Finance and Risk Committee. Um, who, in fairness, uh, had a lot dropped on them last year, and, and we have huge sympathy for that as commissioners, because we did too. Um, but they were a bit further behind than us, so there's been a lot of work gone on in the background. I think uh, I thank Carlo and his team for the help that they've been giving them, and we changed some of our processes because they are the Rangapu's appointments, um, and. So I think that has, has the ability to um, grow and develop this year, even if we have to finish in October. Um, I, think, I think the work that we're all putting into that means that we've got good, um, good early uh, involvement in that, in that important strategy and planning uh, and the financials um, leading through to council decisions. Uh, but we'll, we'll keep you in the loop as much as we can over um, over the Minister's pro awesome. decision processes because we're all starting to incur costs. We have to prepare for an election on October the 8th um, yeah. okay. you know, until we know otherwise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Sorry, and I wonder if this the extra report, do you mind saying what your guys' recommendation was? Oh, right, no, it's, it's up on the website now. Oh. So we proposed to the Minister, so we did a lot of work um, laying out what is, the, what is the strategy, what is the work plan uh, for Tauranga City that we've set in place with the organisation. Uh, where are the key decision points and then what are the risks yeah. of an, a, a, a return to democracy in October of this year. Um, if we got a, a, a council that was pretty much representative of what we had before, um, you know, is it a higher risk or a low risk or a medium risk? Having analysed that, we then suggested to the Minister that we, that she keep the commission on for another 12 months mm -hmm. and then look to have elections uh, in 2020. So we've got three. three. <laughs> 2023, uh, appoint a crown manager uh, and see that through until the 2025 elections when you'd return, when she could make the decision 
you know, was she confident that the elected council would continue on? Yeah. So okay. trying to preserve that uh, direction of travel. Um, of course, the, the law doesn't allow her to, to appoint a crown manager if she decided to do that, and she'd have to dissolve the current commission and appoint a new commission, and there's legal um, um, tests that she would have to meet in order to do that. So it's a complicated, yeah. it's the act is very restrictive, yeah. so we understand why it's taking some time for her to okay. work through that. But that's what we recommended. Um, in law, our recommendation carries quite a lot of weight. Yep. Uh, in the Act, um, but in the end it's the Minister's decision. Cool. Thank you for that, Anne. Yes, uh, Fiddy? Uh, gee, uh, that, that, that's good to know that. Like, uh, but, I mean, obviously a lot of us in here wanted you here for another three years to make sure things were going to go through, but the way you, uh, I've heard it and you've sounded it out, it sounds pretty good to me. Mm. You're still, um, uh, have, I mean, you know, have a bit of control for the next three years if it goes down that way, so mm -hmm. that's cool because I'm still uh, haven't got confidence in um, people putting their name up for councillors, uh, you know, going to follow the path. Hey, you know, again, you know, you know but to me it was always going to take two turns with you guys here virtually to uh, show a path for people, you know, and, uh, and, and hopefully in that time the decisions that you fellows have made will come to fruition to show those people, oh, maybe that is the way to go. You know, okay. So. Thanks, Fiddy. My question from the Chair is this, that, thank you for that, Anne, is that there are the, where, whilst the Minister is considering it, is there any other combination that she could come back with other than what you have recommended, which is quite clear, one more year, appoint the manager till the next 25 election, then back to normal. Yep. Could she come back with it? So it's either that, your recommendation, or the law as it stands now, you finish at the end of this year. Are they the only two? No, no, she could appoint a crown manager. She, could have, she could have elections in October and yep. then appoint a crown manager right. or a crown observer. Yep. So there's, the Act allows her several different types of oh, intervention. Yep. Depending on the legal test as to as to what yeah. the issues are. Right. So okay. Okay. And for for. Uh, or well, she could do nothing at all. Like no, that. no intervention at all. And just. So, but yeah. if, if we were to support it as a run through what you have just put in there now, um, uh, would be at least uh, uh, something uh, from uh, a totem group supporting that. Act? I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think. <laughs> I think the fact that it's been tabled at this meeting means that it's gone through this committee. Yeah, well, I'm talking about a, a formal, yeah, formal, but support. it's already gone oh, in. To yeah. the list. And, <laughs> and the recommendations that I've not put in. Yeah. Just a, a question. Yeah, we on. haven't had that conversation. Yeah, but yeah. Probably no, something that we need to. It's sort of run yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the exit yeah. uh, plan was done last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So that's something we could put on the agenda for our next meeting. Okay? Yeah. It's only just become public. Yeah, yeah okay. Just, just the lip this week. Yeah. Okay, so it's good timing that that's come up here now and we can take it to our meeting in yeah. Yeah, about three weeks, I think. Okay. Maru, you had a question? Yeah, just or a question comment? on uh, uh, Māori Lantra. And I'll ask that question because we've all had an evaluation on the capital value of the horse patch on our block, we got a reduction in rates of that, which is threatened with the Maori Land Court to, uh, to check the capital value of land value of the rates. So we got a, we got a, a concession, if you want, downwards. But I want to talk about the uh, Maori Land rates. Uh, the trustees on Maori Land, are they, uh, can they vote in the election, seeing that the owners of, of uh, Land and their responsible, risk responsible. Yeah, lawyer yeah. Now, now uh, I'm going to take that to my court anyway. Yeah, but you want to put it to I believe Cole may be able to read some light on that. That's our one of our advisors on that one particular question. Coral, Coral, nice Yeah, because it's. Um, well, the the, the LV line, I suppose, uh, is uh, 
is evasion. So what I'm trying to say is, well, if it's avoidance, is that legal? <laughs> okay. Okay. Avoidance and evasion. He took the mode. Talk to Have you got a quick one to answer? Yes, yes or no? For the rest of us? Well, I listen, you had a residential um, vote, so if you live here, you get a vote, um, and it depends if you're on the Māori roll or the general roll. Um, I'm aware of all that. Yeah, and then um, you can also have, if you have a, a, a property or a house that is um, outside of where you, where you live in another ward, then um, there are some, it's called the rate power roll, and there is some um, criteria around that. First name on the list, I know, because my husband's name is the first on the rate, on the rates demand. He can vote, but oh. I can't. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. 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 The entity can wow. Yeah, the entity has only one vote. One vote per house. We were trying to get all the things. Yeah, there's a vote, hey, you know? Needs further details, see Coral. Needs further details. Coral, talk to Maru during lunch. Yeah. 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 Yeah moves the, to accept the um, Rangapu report, seconded by Bill um, and pick one. <laughs> All in favour say aye. 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 To the contrary, carry. Um, there's no other items to discuss, no other late items. Um, before I close, the Quick general business, urgent stuff. No, good. <laughs> okay. Um, so that brings us to the end of the formal part of the hui and to the hui itself. So, on behalf of this of the Tangata Whenua TCC uh, committee, I thank everybody for being here, um, for contributing, and. I'd like to now pass the rapo back to the Hokainga. Kei a koe te rangatira rehua um, to close te ao hui with the karakia. Kia ora. Oh, kia ora katau koe. Nia te kawe a tūtei. Nga wera no a tā. Koe e rūwa te nei a kutu nei koro. A he roto nei. Inga, inga. Thank you to those on Zoom as well. Yeah. Aroha. Have they? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thanks for the work. We moved through that, that pretty good. quick, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, it was good. No, we've got to share it. We can, we can diddle and diddle.